Hey YouTube, Austin Vintage Warfare here again to talk to you about the cringe things that I find on Gunbroker. Sorry I haven't uploaded in a while, I've been doing Arizonian things for the last couple months, so to you Arizona bros, I might be one of you soon. Now we're going to start this off today by talking about a rifle I'm surprised I have never really talked about before in, these, uh, in this series, whatever you want to call it. Um, that would be the Springfield 03 A3 rifles. Now, I, for whatever reason, this particular bolt action rifle is one that has always been more than like an M1 Garand, more than any, I don't understand why that one in particular, it's more expensive than like Pattern 17s. It, I just don't get it. But you can see here that there's a couple for 4,000, a couple for 5,000. Um, and before I get a comment that's gonna say, but, but Austin, um, it, it has the pee pee poo poo attachment and it's worth $2,000 more now. This one has a piece of paper that said it might have been used in this little trial thing. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. And yeah, while there is a sniper model, the, the A4, yeah, okay, that one is worth a little bit more. I understand that. Uh, that, okay, fine. Fair. Fair enough. But like M1 Garands and uh, 1911s that were part of the CMP, yeah, 03 A3s used to be uh, a part of the CMP program. I think they might still be, but they're just never in stock. But they're not worth magically um, like three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 now, um, especially when they were worth like about the same as everything else back in the day. So I don't know, it's just weirdly gouged uh, more so than other rifles. But while we're on the discussion of older firearms, um, you could be the lucky individual who owns Hermann Goering's personal sidearm that is also somehow simultaneously at a museum and is like charred or something. I'm pretty sure it was like burnt. And in, in a way, it's kind of based, right? Like it's, this dude just doesn't care to the degree that he's like, I don't know, man. Uh, Han Solo C96, um, you know, 50 grand. It, it, somebody will buy it. I don't know. Also on the topic of like scams, um, SS marked or claimed to be SS contracted anything is typically not. It's usually a scam. Um, usually some boomer takes a, <laughs> a death's head or just carves a death's head into a K98 stock and uh, oh yeah, it's a super rare uh, PP Poo Poo Division uh, K98, part of the SS, and no, it's not. And a lot of the memorabilia, I guess, is like that too. So most of this stuff is reproduced, like it's a repro or it was never used by uh, anybody in particular, at least not, not who they claim it was used by. All right, Glock people, you're up now. Um, please explain how this particular Glock 17 is worth $4,000 at a buy now price. I swear, I, I, this might be like me just being so fed up with everyone flaunting the next Glock clone on Instagram. Um, and, you know, I have friends that will literally, it's like at the apple of the gun world. Um, I know somebody who's bought every gen of the Glock 17 and, and is like actually genuinely excited uh, about the front serrations added um, as opposed to the last generation that did not have them there. I would quite literally prefer a P320 um, exploding in my hand than paying four grand for a Glock 17 with some Cerakote work done on it. And uh, can we stop, can we stop whatever this is? 100% of the people that buy these are above the age of 50. Trump is never going to go to the range with you. He's not going to see that you have him plastered on your 1911. Um, I just, it's so, it's cringe, dude. Stop. It's the best caliber. It won two world wars. You wouldn't get it, vintage. You are just a snowflake liberal. <laughs> I genuinely don't know which is cringier, the Trump 45 1911, which reminds me oddly a lot of the presidential commemorative coins I would see on infomercials as a kid, or the Punisher skull on the Chinesium aluminum um, on every other guy's AR at the range. Oh, and I know, I know. Oh, but Austin, it's, you know, it's their, it's their property. They could do whatever they want to it. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can... 
you can have a big ass dildo um, imprinted on the side of your PSA lower. Yeah, who am I to judge? But uh, I'm still going to judge. And I'm gonna finish up by bullying Springfield XD owners and people who enjoy them, because uh, I just enjoy that from time to time. I don't know what the XD Elite really is or does, but it looks pretty much the same as any other XD with some flashier stuff on it and an optics cut. But I know I get asked a lot, why do you hate the XD? I've shot it a bunch, uh, myself included, by the way. I've shot this a, a Springfield XD a lot, all right? But this is why I don't like it. Okay, well, it still has a uh, slide the size of a nuclear submarine. Uh, it's still a Croat surplus design with a Springfield Armory logo slapped on top of it. Uh, let's see, dovetail safety that if you get dirt inside of it, it'll lock the gun up. And so to get that fixed, you're gonna have to ship a live firearm back to Springfield Armory for them to fix it, um, which, you know, that's fantastic. You love that. As far as, as far as I'm concerned on this, uh, AXD Elite is overpriced for what it is. And um, yeah, sorry. Paying, it, it, literally for 800 something dollars, you could go buy like a HK, like get a VP or get a Walter. Uh, there's, there's other options for the money. I, I will never, I know, I will never understand how somebody would want to pay 820 something bucks for a uh, Springfield XD. All right, that's gonna do it for me today. This is Austin Vintage Warfare. Um, yeah, I'll try and upload more. This is just a little video, little uh, video is a treat, as they say. But uh, I'll try and upload a little bit more this upcoming month, but I'm going to be going back and forth uh, to where it is I will be moving to. So, you know, bear with me. But I will see you in the next video. Later.